Hey programmers, welcome back. Now that we learned about conditionals in JavaScript, let's work on this exercise so we get really comfortable reading and writing them. So what you want to do is go down to the link in the description and try to work on this exercise on your own. And if you get stuck or need some clarity, then come back to this walkthrough and I'll step through every single problem right now. And so what I want to do to get going is just create myself a nice folder that I'll work in. So let me create this folder. So in my VS code, nothing fancy, I'll just create this nice folder. The instructions also say to create a nice file inside where we're going to be writing our code for part zero. So it looks like in part zero, what I need to do is write each of these snippets and predict how they evaluate. So I'll step through these one by one. Let's work on the very first one. And so here looking at snippet zero one, what I want to do is look at the code and try to predict what will print out, if anything. And then to verify my guess, I'm going to run the file. And so to start, it looks like we just have some basic if statements. Notice that I have my first if statement, its condition is immediately true. So of course, that means I run the code inside. So this code should print out foo. And then if we go further, it should actually not print out bar because of course, our condition is false, right? So just a little warm up here, let's go ahead and run this to be sure. What I'll need to do is make sure that my terminal is right next to the zero file. So that means it should be inside of conditional exercise. So I'll cd into that folder. And now once I'm there, I'll be able to run this file. So just with node zero.js, right, and that should give me foo printed out. So let's keep it rolling. What I'm gonna do is comment out this chunk of code and I'll move on to the next snippet. So looking at snippet zero two, we have again, two if statements and looking at the condition of the first one, I have a longer expression. Here we're just oring some booleans together. Hopefully you remember in our expressions exercise, we know that when we or two false values together, our final result is false, right? So because this condition evaluates to false, I don't print out boop. And if we check the second if statement, we do true or false. That is a scenario where the entire condition would evaluate to true. So this code would print out just beep. So I'll run it to be sure. All right, and there we have beep printed out. Moving on to zero three. Looking at the snippet, we have a variable in the mix. So on line 20, we just have a variable num and it's set to the value 40. Then in our if statement, we write a comparison using that number variable. So here we're really just checking is 40 greater than zero. Recall that when you do a comparison expression, although the like inputs to this expression are numbers, what we get back is a Boolean, right? Is 40 greater than zero? That's a true statement. So this should print out zip. And then from there on the next expression, we check if our number 40 is divisible by two. Remember that this pattern in general, we can use to check for divisibility by two, or in other words, if the number is even, because when I evaluate this code, num refers to 40. And then from there, I do 40 mod two. So if I divide 40 by two, what's the remainder? Well, there is no remainder there. So that part of the expression evaluates to zero. Then I just check is zero equal to zero. And of course, that statement is true. Right, so this will print out zip and also zoop. So let's bring it back to the general form and I'll check my guess. And there we see zip and zoop. So moving on to snippet 04. This time we deal with a variable that contains a string. So looking at the if statement here, we index the string. Remember what we learned about indexing. So if I grab index zero of the string G, that just gives me back the J. And I check is J equal to D? That would be false and since this expression evaluates to false, I don't enter the if statement. Instead, I run the code inside of the else because we have an if else here, right? Remember that when you have a chain of just a simple if else, when the condition is false, then you run the else. So this should just print out nah. Again, key thing to take away from an if else statement is only one of your branches can actually execute, right? You either enter the if or you enter the else, right? Since our condition is false here, I just enter the else. Let's now take a look at snippet 05. This one's gonna be pretty interesting. So here we have quite a bit of code, right? The first thing I'll recognize is I have like two chains of conditionals, right? I have an if else over here and an if else over here. And so what I know is gonna happen is because I have like two separate conditional chains, I know that I'm gonna run like one console.log from each of them, right? So I'm gonna have one console.log happen here and one console log over here. Let's start evaluating this top down. So I have a sentence contains the string Roger that. And then in our if statement over here, we check some condition. Let me evaluate this in pieces. So I know that on the left hand side of this equality, I have some string index expression. And so I know that in the long run, I should be getting a single character, which I'm gonna compare to T. But what exactly does this expression or this character refer to? Well, if we step through it, what I need to do is evaluate first what exact index number we're trying to reference. 
So I need to evaluate this inner expression between the brackets. And so in other words, I need to consider what is sentence.length. So how many characters are in the string Roger that? So if you count the number of characters in the string Roger that, that's going to give you 10 characters, including the space, right? So the length is going to be 10. I do 10 minus 1, which is 9, and I check, you know, is the character index 9 equal to t? And that's actually a true statement, because if I count my indices, I go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And since t is equal to t, that means we enter the if statement over here, and we print out ends in t. And because we chose this part of the conditional, we don't enter this else statement. However, although we know that this one runs, so I'll leave a note over there so I don't forget, we don't enter this else statement, but we would consider any code afterwards. So we would begin another conditional chain, which we must check the condition for. So here we're checking if sentence.length is less than or equal to 4. I just said that sentence.length is 10, so that means that this statement is false, right? 10 is not less than or equal to 4, and so we enter this else statement. And so this part would run. In other words, we should be printing out two things, ends in t and long. So we'll give that a run. And so there we have predicted this snippet. So an important piece of understanding I want you to take away from this example is whenever you have like a lot of conditionals, think about how many chains you have in the first place. So I consider a conditional chain as something that begins with an if statement. And for every conditional chain, what you'll need to do is enter one of the branches, right? and you have to predict which branch you'll enter. So here I have two chains. I know I'm going to run one console.log from each chain. So that was all of these snippets in part zero of this exercise. Let's move on to some tougher snippets in part one. So what I want to do is create a one.js file inside of my folder. Like before, I want to type these snippets into my file and try to predict how they're going to run before I actually execute them with node. So looking at the first snippet here, what I have is a quantity variable it contains the value 38. And we have just some conditional. And so we check, is 38 greater than 30? So I know that this left-hand part of the and is going to be true. I'll just bear that in mind. Then I also check is 38 mod 5 equal to 4. And that's really checking, you know, what is the remainder of 38 divided by 5 and if it's equal to 4. So I quickly evaluate that. I know 38 mod 5 is actually going to give me 3, right? Because when I divide 38 by 5, there's a remainder of 3. And I would check is 3 equal to 4. So this right hand side of the end is going to be false. And so overall, what we're saying is true and false. And I know that that total expression will evaluate to false. Remember that and necessitates that both sides are true. Because this entire expression evaluates to false, then what I would have is this else running, right? So we should print out swoosh. So this is the one that runs over here. And then I consider another conditional chain, right? Although it's a simple if statement, I would consider it its own chain. So we have to decide whether or not we run this console.log. So we check is 38 greater than zero. That's a true statement. And so we're going to print out pause. So this also runs. So I should look forward to swoosh and pause. So let's keep it rolling to snippet 1.1. One, one. So we have two different variables a and b inside of this snippet. And what we want to do is evaluate this, of course. So in this first if statement, I'm checking, is the string celery equal to celery.2 uppercase? And try to understand what this pattern is doing, right? So literally evaluate this piece by piece. So I know that this left-hand side just evaluates to the regular string celery, right? Nothing fancy there. And when I evaluate this right-hand side, I know that, again, this a variable will still evaluate to just the simple original uh, celery string. However, now I have to evaluate this to uppercase expression, and that would evaluate to capital celery, of course. And so I'm checking is a lowercase celery equal to capital celery, and that would of course be false. So I don't run this alpha console.log. And so we don't print out the console.log on 19, and we go on to a very similar condition on line 22. And this one would evaluate to true because I'm checking if uppercase squash is equal to uppercase squash, right? And this means we would print out beta over here. So bear in mind that this expression is really just a pattern we can use to check if some string is uppercase. And the way I can interpret this code is by saying, you know, is the original string equal to its uppercase version? That's only true if it's already uppercase. So let's run this code. And we should see only beta uh, printed out. Nice, and there we have it. So let's look at snippet one, two. So first thing I'll notice in this snippet is I have uh, an if statement, right? I also have an else if. So this is one conditional chain. And I need to check which part or which branch I'll actually enter here. So my number is 9. I check, is 9 greater than 4? 
that's a true statement. So this will just console.log ding, right? And because these are part of the same chain, I've already chosen which branch I enter. That actually means I don't even need to consider or check this other condition, right? Because they are really connected with an if else if. Notice that this condition would have been true, but I already chose this branch. And so I don't run any other code over here. And so let's go ahead and try this. And so this should just print out ding. Cool. And so in this example, I really want you to try to understand what happens because of this else if, right? Since this if else if is one conditional chain and my first condition was true, I only enter this code over here. And what I don't do is run this code. However, let's say we had two separate chains. What I can do is just, just take out this else and say if, if. Now this exists as two separate chains and so I would check uh, both conditions. And I know that nine is greater than four. I also know that nine is divisible by three. So this will print out ding and dong just for uh, argument's sake. So let's go over the last snippet over here, snippet one, three. And so in this one, the first thing I'll notice is I have two separate chains, right? Just a simple if, if. And so evaluating the first one, I check is 12 greater than 10. This is a true statement, so this should print out room. And looking at the second condition over here, I check is 12 mod three equal to zero. In other words, is 12 divisible by three. That's also a true statement. And so this would also run. So I should print out both room and skirt. And there we see that over here. And so there we have part zero and one uh, of this conditionals exercise. In the next one, we're gonna go over, of course, uh, part two and three. What I really want you to do before we go on to the next video is of course, make sure that you can predict these snippets from part zero and one on your own, because we're gonna turn up the difficulty coming up.